and you ugly and you broke money. But that's okay. So am I. And everything's all right if everyone else is doing it. And yes, I'm jumping off the bridge that the homies jump off too. <laughs> now you guys are probably wondering, what's the antidote to being broke? Mm, not a bad idea, but I only works if you have a vagina. Now, what most people do, <laughs> yeah. and what I did to combat the sickness that is brokenness, was getting a job. And if you're like me, you worked a couple different jobs in your life. You meet a lot. Man, I worked at Six Flags, McAllister's, H&M. You know what I'm saying? H&M was a cool job, though. A lot of people from different walks of life. Some of them walk normal. Some of them crip walk. Some of them are paraplegics. However they choose to walk. The plethora of people you meet in the jungle that is the workforce will never cease to amaze me. Or even you. Maybe. I don't know. That's why in today's video, we'll be talking about different types of people at work. To start off the list, we got the guy who works too slow. Now, early in the video, I mentioned I worked a couple. Bro, I hope he talk about the nigga that always want to rap. Yo, you know that nigga that always say, yo, I'm trying to make it out the hood, man. <laughs> At least he trying, though, but that shit is so annoying, bro. He be like, hey, come, come listen to my song. Come listen to my song real quick. I'm like, bro, go get sit your ass down, man. Cool job. You know what I'm one of those jobs was Pizza Hut. Ah, I still remember orientation like it was yesterday. I just finished all my computer training, and my manager was sitting at her desk trying to convince me that huh? $10 an hour was a lot of money. And at the time, I knew it wasn't, but I didn't care. I just needed any money. Any money is good money, you know what I'm saying? Any source of income. So then boom, I get the job. And now at this point, I've been working the job for a couple months. Now you gotta remember, this is pizza. People are coming in and out faster than your dad was when he was making you. Now there's a new guy at work and he looked like a combination of like Lil Baby before he had dreads and Joey Badass. And I'm not gonna lie, he might've maybe been acoustic. So, so, oh. Which would have not really been all that surprising because, like, come on, it's Pizza Hut. They're picking up anyone off the street. What's good? How do you think I got the job? So I'll call this little baby Joey badass love child Marcus. Now, the reason I call Marcus acoustic was because anytime anyone would talk to him, whether it be the managers, co-workers, or customers, he just didn't respond to anything anyone said to him. On the rare occasion that he would respond to something that you said to him, he would just start mumbling. <laughs> or he would nod his head with the blankest stare on his face. Out of everyone in there, I had to interact with Marcus the most and that's because our positions were intertwined so let me explain in pizza there's a big oven that cooks all the pizzas and Marcus was a cook so he would put the pizza at one end of the stove and then I'll be on the other end ready to do ball turn his kiss off nigga my room all right, man, I'm not gonna say anything. Package man. the order. <laughs> and whether it was for delivery right, on, or man. carry out, I would put it in the warmer for carry outs or put it in the delivery bag for delivery. A super simple job, right? What sucked about it though, was that I could only go as fast as the cook ahead of me. And Marcus used to work so slow, bro. I knew anytime I worked with him, backed up orders were a guaranteed. You're Marcus fired. did end up getting fired though. Huh? I forgot exactly what happened, but I remember he walked in, he took an order out the warmer and just walked straight out the door. He came Came back like 30 minutes later i remember my manager being like kind of angry when she was walking towards him and he pretty much got fired on the spot you know it was nice knowing you marcus no one else mumbled quite like you next up on the list we got the person who always needs someone else's help so at the same piece i go out i was low-key one of those niggas man I'm not gonna fake it. To a job that I mentioned earlier, I had two managers. I had like the main manager and I guess like the co-manager. Now the main manager, she was calm, cool, collected. She never folded under no sort of pressure. Any problem could arise and she would always just be ready to fix it. Now the co-manager was the complete opposite. She was really nervous and really antsy. And she do you fuck with snot? I ain't gonna lie, nah. Um, bumps not. She was always so indecisive about everything she would do. The few moments she wasn't indecisive, she was actually a pretty decent manager. But that was more rare than a bloody steak. She pretty much just needed reassurance on everything she did. And she would always ask me things that she should already know as the manager. Like, she'll ask me things like, hey, should I breathe today or should I let the lack of oxygen to my brain kill me? Uh, you should. 
Next up on the list, we got the old heads. Now, the old heads have been working <laughs> yeah. at that job longer than you've been alive. I don't know what Houdini tricks they pull out their sleeves, but Did somehow they're able to provide oh. for a wife, a baby mama, three kids off twelve seventy five an hour. Unk, I ain't gonna say too much, Unk, but Unk, you, 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 you know you got wife and kids at home. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You playing with fire, Unk, I'm telling you. I'm convinced all these old heads just hate their families at home. There go daddy, y'all. Daddy 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 daddy, 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 Sit down. Get in the back seat. Get back there. Come on, man. Not going too much. Sit down. Hey, baby. Come on, pull up. Let's go. Uh, Stop. I'm trying to clock in. Clock me in. You ain't gonna clock me in, bro. You ain't gonna clock me in. I'm gonna clock you in. You gonna make me quit. I ain't gonna lie, I was one of those niggas, man. I ain't gonna fake it, bro. I want the old head, but I ain't gonna lie, bro. Every nigga got that bitch at work that they be messing with, bro. Come on, bro. Let's be real, man. <laughs> These old heads love to talk about their 401ks too. And I get it, like that's what the 20, 30 years working at that same company was all for. And like the amount of money they be <laughs> talking about don't even really be that much for real life. This girl made all of that in like one month. Oh Lord. Grown ass woman, bro. Companies be doing these old heads in the worst way possible. I remember I was told one time someone got like an air fryer and like a hundred dollar gift card for like 30 years of working for the same company. Grown ass when woman, I heard man. that, it scared me so much. I didn't even know how to transition to the next segment. Next up on the list, we got the work crush. Work crushes, you know, depending on the type of dude you is. Work crushes, they just make selling your soul to Uncle Sam just a little bit easier. And say the right things to your work crush, it could be a two for one sale and getting your soul taken. Just work crushes give you that little extra pep in your step before coming in. Instead of coming in 10 minutes late, you only come in eight and a half minutes late. I don't yeah, know what man. Hey, they used to, they <laughs> I used to go to work way more, bro. Oh God. In the air in the workplace, but it's something. I used to be like, I used to tell my manager, hey, can I come in on this date, this specific time, bro? That makes everyone in there forget about their significant others at home. These work wife, work husband memes y'all be seeing is not a drill. It's real life. I just think about it for a second. Let's say you work an average work week, eight hours a day, five yeah, days I'm a week. You. You're spending majority of your day at work. And then by the time you get home, you're too tired to even interact with your real family and friends most of the time. So like, who else am I supposed to like? You get tired of your right hand really quick. Ah, don't be sad, baby. You saved me from a lot of dumb decisions. Next up on the list, we got the dude who always comes to work fried. I really don't got oh, too much man. to say about him. They just be chill. KG, like, that be you? Really doing too much. They're more than likely entrepreneurs on the side. Look, bro, I know I'm not the only one. If you ever went to work fried before, it's like this script like <laughs> loads up in your head and you just like, kind of follow your script. Because any job, it becomes kind of routine after a while. You just kind of know what to do and like what to expect and what's going to happen. It's almost like you see yourself in the door. Oh, I got to tell y'all something, bro. I haven't ordered DoorDash in about a week, man. I've been doing good, bro. Them groceries. They cook it. like, okay, this is my job. This is what's expected out two of me. Weeks. These are my no, yeah, like two weeks. I see them every day. This is my password to clock in. So the system knows I've been here for w, eight man. hours. Thank whatever, you, bro. How long my shit's supposed to be. Think about getting fried at work too. It's like you're trying to go left and right at the same time. All the symptoms of getting fried are all counterproductive to being a good worker. Ah, oh, yeah, because short-term memory loss just screams good worker. Next up on the list, we got the dude who always comes late to work. <laughs> nah, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I was the dude who came late to work every day. But hear me out, though. Hear me out. Like, I just didn't show up, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I wouldn't bro. be crazy late. I wouldn't be dumb late. Like, let's say I was scheduled for like three o'clock. I would probably be clocking in around like 305, 307, something like that. I wouldn't be no more than like 10 minutes late. Oh my gosh, I just remembered. All right, so boom, I used to work at Publix. And I oh, didn't just hell no. Work in any department in Publix. I worked ain't in that the like a CBS? Deli department, bro. Nah, that yes, I was this dude making chicken tender subs for like eight hours straight a day that's no exaggeration either literally anyone who came up 90 percent of the time they wanted a chicken tender sub i'm being kind of generous with that bro it was that's probably good, like 99 percent before i got hired to Publix, i was watching youtube videos to see what i was getting myself into and the little snow bunny whose video i watched she didn't tell me this is the fire i was walking into when i was working at pizza hut i could 
get away easy coming in five ten minutes late but when i ended up going to Publix, the standards went up just a little bit just a little bit like Publix, it's like bougie for like broke people it's like the target or the h m of grocery stores at Publix, there was a grace window so you could clock in three minutes late and it still wouldn't count you as late and me being me i used to try to delay coming into Damn. work as much as possible so i used to try to come in exactly at that three minute grace window and 90 percent of the time i try to do that i would miss and it will lead to me clocking in like five six seven minutes after my shift so i'm doing that i'm racking up tardies mind you at the time my managers aren't really telling me any all these trash no it's not all these really good bro for a cheap store like that you know what I'm saying? But to me i'm thinking it's not really that big of a deal to them until one day i came into work ready to make like a thousand chicken tender subs and my manager told me that the store manager wanted to see me and for anyone who doesn't know the store manager is just a manager's Fuck manager God. my manager walks me to the store manager's office boom it's my manager the store manager and me all in one room the store manager pretty much sits me down and tells me that i've been like tardy like 80 something times in like the Damn. last three months and pretty much it was company policy over there that if you're late too many times in a row you get one week suspension no pay i wasn't really too mad about it like i want to quit i just want to quit because around that time i really started to hate the job now one week suspension was really a vacation moral of the story kids only show up to your job late every day if it's pizza hut all right next up on the list we got the guy who thinks he's the manager the guy who thinks he's oh the manager. oh my god God. He's just a teacher's pet on a minimum wage salary. Nine times out of ten, the guy who acts like the manager wants to be manager eventually in the future. But I don't know why. Being a manager is like being a teacher. And being a teacher is so ass. I'd rather join the army than be a teacher. And watch out for these dudes that want to be the manager, bro. Because these niggas will like he he ha ha in your face. And then they'll <laughs> snitch on you about like taking extra breaks to in the back or some shit. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. I just want to say thank you to everyone who made it. W vid, man. I kind of took a different direction with this video. I try to be a little bit more personable, tell you guys.